So day two of working on the Miata, hopefully. So, okay, what's going on with the Miata right now? Essentially, the power steering leaks something fierce. I go through a quarter of it in about a week now. Uh, it's really increased in the rate at which it drops on the ground. I'm tired of buying fluid for it, and I'm not gonna fix it. So, <laughs> funny thing about it is the AC also doesn't work. We talked about this in previous episodes, so nothing new there. What I think happens with the Miatas, and we'll find out in a couple seconds, is that the serpentine belts, or the accessory belts that run everything, belt will run the alternator and the water pump, the other belt will run the air conditioning compressor, and the power steering fluid and since the power steering fluid leaks and so does the air conditioning why have them on at all <laughs> so it's not the right thing to do but it's probably what we're gonna end up doing also maybe it'll free up an extra one horsepower we'll find out I love cars that use the stick still the support rod uh, it never breaks right? I mean, the gas struts can go bad time after time, or you can have hinges that get rusty and stuck shut, but the stick always works. Love the stick. This is the 1.6 liter Miata. It's a 1993 model. It has the power steering and the AC. It's actually fairly loaded. It's got electric windows, things like that, all them doodads. So if we take a look, we can see that there are two separate belts that drive everything. So like I assumed, one for the alternator and the water pump, and then one for the power steering pump and the AC compressor. So all we have to be able to do is loosen a few things, possibly tighten them. We'll see which direction makes it happen. Uh, we might need to get some other pieces out of the way for this to happen. Oh look, tape. Hmm. So once we get some things out of the way, find the right size sockets, we should be able to loosen up the belt, take the belt off, thus no longer driving the power steering and the AC, which will poss possibly free up some horsepower, but more importantly, we'll stop turning the pumps that aren't doing anything at the moment. So let's see if we can find the right hardware. I must be getting slightly more intelligent because I chose to park in the shade, because I knew that I might be working on this. <laughs> so at least we get to work in the shade. So in order to make my life hopefully easier, first thing I'm going to do is remove or at least loosen this hose clamp. And I'm going to do the same over here, and then we should be able to pull off this piece of piping. Of course the engine is boiling hot as I just drove it home. So everything's probably trying to burn me. Okay, successfully removed. So now we can get a much better look at what's going on. You can see the crank pulley down there. That's the air conditioning and that's the power steering. So we just need to make the belt loose enough, which it's very tight right now. We just need to make the belt loose enough so that it slips off. So the tensioner looks to be a number 12 millimeter. So now that that's nice and loose, uh, it looks like we can loosen up this block which I don't think is letting any tension off of this system. So that's not doing us any good. Huh, okay. You ever just like space out for a minute and not realize what's really going on? So I am attaching some sockets because uh, for some reason my brain is not comprehending what needs to happen here. Oh. Oh. It's a very painful crack. Okay, well, at least we got it loose. I'm trying to see what takes the tension off of this belt here. I thought it would be like an alternator, but it doesn't seem to be working that way. I don't know if this is a nut at the bottom or what. I'm afraid it'll fall off into the abyss. Okay, seems to be a nut, so that's good. 
All right, so that folds out of the way. What'd that get us? Nothing. Okay, so we will switch to a 14 millimeter to take off that lower bolt, but I see that there are others behind the pump wheel. So let's see what happens after we take off that first 14 millimeter bolt. You ever get the feeling something really bad's about to happen? Oh. Okay. It came loose. It's a good sign. What did it get us? Nothing? Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It didn't get us nothing, it got us everything. That's perfect. So, let's have a look-see. With that bolt out of the way, and I'm assuming some of the others, I was able to push down on this, which pushed the whole pump down, and we simply slide off the belt. Now, I'm not gonna be getting rid of any of these parts. I'm going to be storing them in a place where I will easily lose them, hopefully not. But, with that out of the way, I should be able to put everything back up that needs to be up, because uh, I probably don't want this stuff is loose, so I am going to retighten that bolt and that. And that should keep everything from falling into anything else. And I'll probably take it for a test drive and see if there's any difference. I rehooked up the intake piping, uh, tightened all the bolts down again, so everything's back to where it was. I don't think we have any other hardware, pretty sure. So legit, this is going to be the first start after doing this removal. And just in case you're curious, or you need to know the belt number, and I'll link this in the uh, in the comment. This is a CarQuest Micro VAT K04037. In case you needed that. So okay, we're gonna do this together. It should start. Well. Okay, so before we start it, this car has a problem starting after it's been run hot. So let's see what happens, I suppose. <laughs> Man, I hate that door buzzer. seems to be idling pretty normal. Uh, let's rev it up a bit. Because if we want something to go wrong, we want it to go wrong in the driveway. <laughs> if you're gonna break something, you might as well break it at home. At least you can walk home then. Okay, let's uh, remove the stick and take it for a drive, see if there's any change. We will only be taking this around the block for a short test. Okay, so I don't really feel much of a change in the power steering. Uh, it's still pretty firm, obviously, <laughs> since we have none. No power steering assist right now. But it doesn't seem that worse. It might actually be a little bit better. So something else I wanted to test, uh, the fans. Okay, they're still blowing like they used to, so that's good. But if I hit the AC button, no change. Okay, that makes sense because there's no draw on the lines in the system because there's no compressor hooked up now. But one thing it does do is turn on my auxiliary fan for the radiator. So that's great because of my overheating-ish issue because the thermostat's not telling the primary fan to turn on Man, it just sounds like there's a whole bunch of things wrong with this car. But it's not. It's It was a really cheap, good car to purchase, and I regret nothing. No regrets. So, I don't know. I consider it a big success currently, because now I can have the fans turn the extra fan on, so that cools the radiator when I'm sitting in traffic, until we can fix that issue. Uh, 
yeah, I don't, I don't see the downside in this. Uh, especially because now the, especially because now the power steering pump won't be turning, thus destroying itself. Still slow, but we didn't really expect much of a change there. So let's get this bad boy home. So we just got back. Everything seems to be working just like it did before. Maybe a little less restrictive on the throttle. Maybe it's really early to tell. I'll be sure to update you guys after another couple days of driving. See if there's any real change. I'll also let you know if anything blows up. I'm sure you'll see it here first. Uh, sweating again, but you know, that's, that's what doing something every day is all about. So why would you do this mod? Uh, if your stuff's already broken like mine, it's a good reason, and less drivetrain lag. Uh, otherwise, if you want to know what it feels like to drive race car, yeah, mm, not really. If you're preparing to get rid of these things anyway, and you know that it's going to be something you're going to do, then you might want to consider trying this, because all in all, it takes two minutes if you know what you're doing, and now, because of the video, you do. Uh, oh, sweat bead. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Uh, let me know if you want to see more Miata stuff. I have a couple things planned for this car, but been very lazy to do them. Maybe if I get some encouragement, we'll do more with the car. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.